Hurricane Idalia is set to hit Florida with a punishing blow as a powerful major hurricane. This incredible satellite imagery shows lightning within Idalia as it continues to strengthen. Idalia will bring winds of over 120 miles per hour, storm surge up to 15 feet, and a potential for flash flooding. Idalia is already bringing dangerous conditions to Florida's west coast with the worst expected early Wednesday morning. Hurricane warnings are in effect across a large portion of Florida's west coast where the worst conditions are expected. Be sure to pay attention to your local weather forecast and follow along here for more weather coverage. Alright, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahushab Bashim Chakwadash. I'm a Shah, part of the Camp Prophets in Babylon. Double honor to the elders and apostles of the great millstone. Salutations to the hopeful elect that's scattered among the four corners of the earth. In this lesson, I want to touch upon Hurricane Idalia. It is headed towards Florida. And they say, based off of the category, it can be a category three. And it's a vicious storm. And basically, all things are created by the Heavenly Father to fulfill his purpose so the destruction that this storm can bring because we know that hurricanes bring destruction when they hit the earth it's a hey, it's up to the lord how intense he wants to destroy whatever landmarks and cities that he wants to destroy and it's all in the hands of the lord basically and i will get that in the book of deuteronomy because when you're introduced to the power, Yahweh Wa, well, Yahweh Shai, and his son, Yahweh Shai, you will understand that this power is not to be played with. This is a serious matter. When the prophets go out and teach, we're not teaching just to, you know, sound deep or sound profound and wise and all that. No, we're teaching because we have to prophesy. You know, it's what we're commanded to do. To put the fear in our people and the ones that you know will basically get the fear they will become wise because the fear is the first step to be accepted of the heavenly father all right this is deuteronomy 32 and verse 39 it says see now that i even i am he and there is no god with me so all these people are praising all these false gods and you know following these different religions man you know all that's a waste of time it will lead you to your death and destruction that's that wide all right path that leads to the death and destruction that's mentioned in the book of matthew but the thing is is that we're here to prophesy and to basically show our faith when we go out and teach and do these videos so you know we're not there just to say words and say and act and you know just to say it no we're saying it in it will come to pass because we're not saying our own words. We're speaking the words of the Heavenly Father, man. It says, I kill and I make alive. So this is the true living power that creates everything, creates life as you see now, okay? And makes changes, all right, of new rulerships and kingdoms, okay? This is all about prophecy, man, okay? It says, I wound and I heal, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand so you can run away because you know you got the hurricane warning or you know whatever it may be but if the most high sees fit that you gonna get impacted by this hurricane you will okay you can run away whatever he can destroy your house man and have you suffer that loss he you can move and leave and all your precious stuff that you left in that house could be taken away and there's a lot of our people already that's living like paycheck to paycheck, barely making it. So in one storm, he can make you homeless, man. All right. So it really shows you why you should seek the Lord. And we got that in Isaiah 55 and verse 6 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. So this is why we're out. We're out to teach you the truth. We're out to warn the people and to tell our people to repent. We're not out just to just to talk, you know just to gossip or whatever. No, we're, we're giving you a warning. This is something that 
you're supposed to take heed to. It says, verse 7, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto Yahweh Shai, and he will have mercy upon him and to our power, for he will abundantly pardon. And that's what we want. We want mercy. In order for you to receive mercy, you have to repent. And see, it's spiritual how the Most High, right after the Day of Atonement, okay, because the, the men and you know, we're rehearsing the righteous acts. So, you know, we fasted, we done our thing, you know, that was commanded of us. We had a holy convocation last week. So we practiced that and it's spiritual how then right two days, about two days, three days after, now you see, you know, a hurricane coming to destroy, you know, a city is coming towards Tallahassee, which is the capital of Florida, man, you know. As I see, as I as you look at the path that is veering, it, sh it shows that it's about to hit Tallahassee, which is the capital. And that doubt, if it hits Tallahassee and destroys it dr drastically and you know intensely, intensely, hey man, that's gonna make a big impact too, you know. And we're there to basically proclaim the the judgment of this place, man. Announce it that this place will be destroyed. So you you want to be on the side that receives the mercy and not suffer destruction all right and that's for our people that's why we're out there to tell you to repent and that's that's the whole time that's what that uh the day of atonement was about all right asking the lord for a clean slate for forgiveness of your sins okay making you stronger in the spirit man all right so it's spiritual how the most high you know because you know that was the day when all the men that you know and that know what they're a part of basically you know fasted because you have to know about the day of atonement in order for you to practice it and rehearse it man you have to have some knowledge on it so all of us was in agreement on that just like how we're all in agreement on the destruction of this place we understand that this place needs to be destroyed scripture say can two walk together unless they be agreed all right and that shows you how powerful it is when you fast okay because it shows that we're serious it, it, it allows us to be humble we afflict our flesh so now when we pray to the Most High, we're humble. We're coming to the throne humbly. And brothers was not just asking on that day for just uh, forgiveness of their sins. We also asked the Most High to jack this place up and destroy this place, man. So this is a time we should be praising the Lord, okay, for these things. Because the Most High has both sides of the spectrum. The, the life and, and then he also has death. And he has destruction, you know, which is his wrath. And then he has mercy. So it's a balance. So, you know. Here's an example of the Most High, okay, in the account with Nineveh, how he preserved that city, okay, because why the people fasted, and also they, they asked for forgiveness. But see, we're here, according to Je Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8, to prophesy against this country and kingdom, okay, America. So that means we want to see the Most High basically tap into that destruction side, all right? So, but this is an example to show you how powerful fasting is. All right, so that's why this is a spiritual thing. This is Jonah chapter 3, verse 1. And a word of Yahweh Shemel Shai came on to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, the, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So, see, the most we speak in the words, just like when Jonah had to go to Nineveh and, and prophesy, okay, and warn the people. We're doing the things, but we're warning the people for the most high destroying this place, you know. And, and and uh Jonah did the same thing. He 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 put the fear in the people and let's see how the people reacted basically to show you, you know, what the most high does when you, you know, fast, when you when you uh get the fear, all right, you want mercy. Verse five says, So the people of Nineveh believed Yahweh Shai power and proclaimed the fast and put on sackcloth, and sackcloth that goes into a mourning state. It says for the greatest of them, even to the least of them, so they humbled themselves. Okay, because when you fast and you put on sackcloth, you're humbling yourself. It says, for word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And that's what even the king did that, man. So, you know, our, you know, in, a, in America, all right, <laughs> look, look at what there is, man. The people trusting in, in the king of Egypt, man, all right. Because this place is spiritually Egypt, okay? And so if you're looking at who's ruling right now, 
all right, like Joe Biden to set up leaders and stuff, they cause our people to error. They're not going to do that, man. You ain't going to see, you know, Joe Biden or Donald Trump or something like that. You know, these Edomites have a fast and, uh, you know, put sackcloth on. No, man, they're pride. They're prideful. They was built that way. Okay. And let's get this. Isaiah chapter 31, I believe. No, chapter 30. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, and verse 1. It says, Woe to the rebellious children, Savior, how about Shemel Shah, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. See? So it's destruction to all you people that refuse to repent. So it's very important to repent, all right, to hear the word and repent. It says that walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. OK, so it says, therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. And that's what we see to this day. All right, because Egypt goes into bondage when you go into that word and right now. Our people are in bondage. You know, you got to work a nine to five. You got to pay tribute onto your oppressors. Okay. So it's telling you, you know, these people are going to be perplexed. They're going to be confused. They're not going to know what the hell is going on. That's why you see these people, you know, running like chickens with their heads cut off. All because of storms coming to, this, to hit this place, man, to cause some destruction. All right. And the most high is uh, doing this, man. So it's showing you, you know, when you trust in the king. Okay. You're basically going to get punished with that man because he's set up to lead the people. All right. And Pharaoh is a king, you know. And if you look in the modern day sense, the Pharaoh will be what? The, the set up leaders, which I gave you that example of the presidents. OK, that are set up. And you don't see, you know, going back to uh, Nineveh, uh, Jonah chapter three and verse seven, you don't see. Well, verse six. You don't see a king, which is, you know, in the modern day sense of president doing something like what the Nineveh king did. It says, for word came on to the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and he laid his robe from him and covered with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And you see all people, you know, following after, you know, the ways of the king, which, you know, scriptures even say as the king is so all the people roughly paraphrasing. OK, you know, the people follow after who's in rulership. So you don't see these Edomites doing these things. So guess what? All you people that trust in this place, it will be your shame, your confusion, your destruction. All right. Because this place will not repent. A lot of our people think that, you know, oh, well, there's a chance for mercy. There's a chance for this for America. You know, they say God bless America and all these things, man. No, man. The Most High has his eyes set to destroy this place. So you have to believe in the report. And then, you know, ask for mercy. Verse 7 says, And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, See, this is how you know, you know, the king is able to pass legislation like this. So to this day, the president is able to pass legislation. Nothing new under the sun. It says, saying, Let neither man nor beast nor, so like it says, herd nor flock taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. So even the animals fasted. So it's showing you, you don't see that here, man. Okay? Where they'll make a decree and a law telling people to fast. You know, people people got fast food. They can eat anytime, anywhere. They got, you know, uh, Uber Eats and DoorDash and all these things. So, you know, this is not going to happen in this time. So you could tell that. Don't use Nineveh as an example. A lot of these Christians like to use Nineveh as an example, but they can't. You don't see them proclaiming, okay, a decree saying to fast. All right. Verse eight says, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto Yahweh Shem Shai power. And the only ones crying is the elect in this time. Scriptures even say that. All right. They cry day and night unto the power. Yahweh Yahweh Shem Shai. It says, yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. See, evil way and the violence. This place has so much violence. So much people doing evil and wickedness. Man, they ain't going to turn away and, and make a change. The only ones that's going to do that is the elect. So that's why the Most High is only going to deliver a few people and destroy 
a great majority of people on the land of America. It says, verse 9, who can tell if Yahweh Shemeshach power will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? See, so it's the most high's anger. When he sees people sin and do wickedness, you know, do evil, it, it, it angers him, okay? Verse 10 says, and Yahweh Shemeshach power saw their works. See, so they're doing a good work when they did those things, fasted and doing these things that's why we do those, those things there's nothing wrong with fasting you know there's nothing wrong with asking for mercy but you have to what forsake your evil way all right and things like that man you have to come humbly to the power it says that they turn okay in power Yahweh Shemel Shai saw all their works that they turned from their evil way and Yahweh Shemel Shai power repented of the evil and he had said that he would do unto them and he did it not. So he didn't do that. He didn't destroy the place because why these people, they, they asked for forgiveness, but they all came in unity, you know, and agreed. It was a decree that everybody had to do that. And not even just the people, the animals as well. Okay. And they cried out. The only ones we see going out diligently, you know, is the men that the Most High set up. All right. And he gave the, his spirit to them to do those things. And he even said, many are called, but few chosen. So only the chosen will be saved. Just because you're called does not mean you're chosen to be saved. So, you know, we hope to be of that number. So we're going to keep fighting. But in the meantime, we're going to see destruction come to this place because there's certain people that will not. OK, repent. And that's why the both side has a problem with that. All right. And let's get that real quick. This is the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 9 and verse 9. It says, Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. And that's what's coming. These people are going to dwell in torments, suffering. The most I can, just because you ran away from the storm does not mean that the storm is not going to destroy your, your goods and stuff that you have, that you worked so many years for. See, and one, and one, one, basically one hour less than an hour he can have the storm destroy all your stuff that you worked your whole life for and you'll just be left with what your vehicle that allowed you to escape death okay well you know you really can't escape death but you know basically he can keep you alive and preserve you but have you suffer have you be tormented that's you being tormented it says for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me so basically you're, you're blinded by what is given to you in this society that we live in. A gift destroyed of the heart. And there's plenty of gifts out here, man. Okay, it caused you to not, what, sigh and cry to the Heavenly Father. It caused you to not want to fast, not want to come humbly to the Heavenly Father. So guess what? The Most High is going to have to take you out because you don't know Him. You don't know the power. And these Christians definitely don't know the power. That's why they break down the Scriptures wrong. They use the Scriptures incorrectly. Verse 11 says, and they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty, because we're under grace right now. So, you know, it's liberty, but not liberty to sin. It says, and when as yet a place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. So they didn't understood. They didn't have that understanding given to them. They didn't understand, you know, how to repent and all these things and what to do. All right. But we do. You know, that's why we practice it. And it's a blessing that the most I revealed it to us. All right, it says the same must know it after death by pain, and that's what's coming to these people. All right, so uh, this is these are the beginning of sorrows, like Yahweh Shai said, man. So there's gonna be torment, sorrows. All right, and this they said this this hurricane is gonna be, you know, doing some damage, man. So this is the book of Second Ezra chapter fifteen verse one it says, "Behold." Speak down in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. And that's what we're doing. Just like Jonah did, okay? At Nineveh, he spoke the words of the Heavenly Father. We're doing that now, in this time. And and the words of prophecy is going to tell you also that there's uh, all people that's not going to repent, man. We, we can tell them time and time again, all right? And they will not repent. Let's get that to prove the point, too, Okay? This is the book of Isaiah chapter six and verse eight. It says, and also, Salakia says, also I heard the voice of Yahweh Shemel Shah saying, 
who shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here am I, send me. And see, you know, that's the means that were sent, sent out, okay? We're sent out to do this work, all right? It says, and he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, see? So they understood not, but despised it. These people at the most high, it's prophecy. So that's why we, we understand that people are not going to understand, okay? Although they may hear it. Okay, walk past and hear it. They're not going to understand. It says, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Because, you know, these people out here, they can do those things, see and hear, but they can't do it spiritually. Verse 10 says, make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes. Least they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. That's them truly being healed. But the Most High doesn't want to heal everyone. And he definitely doesn't want to heal Babylon, man. This place is mystery, Babylon, the great, all right? And Babylon goes into Baba, which means confusion. That's why you see this place in chaos. It's confused. It's out of order. It's a whole lot of, you know, mess here. So this place will not be healed, you know? And scriptures say that, all right? Jeremiah 51 and 9, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. So all you citizens that call yourself an American, and you're joined on to this place. You, you, you call this place your refuge. All right. This is your comfort. You're just like, you know, the city of Babylon that will not be healed, man. So you won't be healed. Neither will this place be healed. It says forsake her and let us go. Everyone into his own country for her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. See, so the most I have heard the sign and crying of us asking the most High, please judge this place. You know, we're signing a crime for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof, according to Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4, man. All right, so the Most High is hearing our words, okay? It's going into the ears of the Heavenly Father. So Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 10 says, Make the heart of this people fat and make their eyes, so like and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. And see, there's some people that the Most High does not want to be healed of all people. All right. It said, then I said, Lord, how long? And he answered until the cities be wasted without inhabitant and the houses without man and the land be utterly desolate. See, the cities be wasted. How can the cities be wasted, man? You need to bring the destruction. And you see this hurricane <laughs> coming. All right. It's, it's wasting this place, bringing destruction as well as these other prophecies that's going to come to pass, man. It's scripture say, like I've repeated it before, the beginning of sorrows. All right. The beginning of sorrows. So it says, verse 11, then. Yeah. So, yeah, I went into that. Verse 12 says, and yeah, how about Shemel Shah? So like, that's all on that. So let me grab this precept, though, going back. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 15 and verse. Let's do this. Uh, verse. Five, behold, save you how much smell shy. I will bring plagues upon the, the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. See, so the most high is bringing this destruction, all right, and it, it will cause death as well, all right. It's not going to be what these people, you know, think, you know, of all prosperity, peace, a time of, you know, like peace, okay. No, man, it's going to be worse than peace, man. Scripture, you know, they'll seek peace and not find it. <laughs> You know, it's going to get bad out here. Verse 6 says, For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. See? It says, Therefore, say if Yahweh Shemel Shah, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. And that's what we're doing. You know, when we go out and teach and we do these videos, we're complaining. All right, we're crying. Not everyone's doing that. So that's why we want to see these people be judged. All right, they don't deserve to live because they didn't eat. Nineveh was an example, man. All right, of repentance, of showing repentance, man. And, and Nineveh got destroyed later down the road, okay, that city. But hey, man, this place is going to be destroyed, man. Because these people, they're not even going to do that. Pass the law to, you know, repent, fast, and, you know, even have the animals fast. These people don't even know what a fast is, man. Okay. They can't even do a fast without food nor water, okay? They can't even live off of that. So, hey, man, 
This is the book of Amos chapter 3, verse 6 says, Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Yeah, because this, this, basically the ones that's blowing the trumpet is the men that sign and crying continually. It said that, you know, they'll complain continually. So we don't stop. That's why scriptures say, you know, to uh, be in, in season and out of season. No matter what, do this work, man. All right? You know, it says, Shall there be evil in the city and Yahweh Shem outside have not done it? Yeah, this evil which is bad times is coming, man. All right? And it's just the beginning of it, man. All right? Verse 7 says, Surely Yahweh Shem power will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets, so the prophets will have the secrets. They'll understand what's going on, man. All right? Verse 8 says, The lion hath roared, who will not fear? You know? Because Yahweh Shah is this word, man. Okay? And Yahweh Shah is the lion from the tribe of Judah, man. All right? And he's not going to hold his tongue. All right? Neither will the heavenly father hold his tongue. Yahweh Shah Shem El Shad. So the things that they say will happen will come to pass, man. Whether you like it or not. We don't care if you don't believe. Just because you say, what if some does not uh, believe? Their unbelief is not going to change reality. It says, Yahweh Shem El Shad have spoken. Who can but prophesy? So that's why we prophesy, man. You know? Who, who, can, who can but prophesy, man? That's what you should be doing. Okay? Hearing this word. It should, you know, cause you to teach and bring out this word and prophesy psalm chapter 83 and verse 15 says so persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm see and these people are already afraid before the storm even came so how much more when it does touch the land this is before it hits the land so how much more it says fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy name oh yeah how watch me so we're not going to sit there and say you know the so-called white man esau edom is the cause of this uh storm we're going to tell you that it's because of the most high that done it so you'll know the name you'll know who's doing it okay and and it's for you to seek the lord and this is your chance to repent to inquire you know to go to the prophets to inquire of the power the true living power yeah how about shine all right and ask what can you do all right in order to receive mercy verse 17 says let them be confounded and troubled forever Yea, let them be put to shame and perish, that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Yahweh, art the most high over all the earth. And Yahweh Shemel Shai will be known. That's why we do these videos as well, you know, to proclaim the name, to tell you who is behind all of this, okay, that you see going on, this destruction, all right, you know, the storm that's coming, <laughs> it's brewing, okay. You're going to know. That's why we got to do these, this work. We can't stop, man. All right? And and I, it don't matter what the hell, you know, you have to do in the land of your captivity. You still got to prophesy. All right? If you have that gift. Verse Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17 says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. So this is a warning. The trumpet being blown. Us speaking, us prophesying, that's a warning. And then uh, Jonah was an example, you know, gave warning to the people. And the people, you know, they believed, all right? They all was on one accord. But over here, no, it's, it's, it's division. And Yahweh Shai said he came to bring division, all right? Not peace, but a sword. And a sword goes into division as well. A sword goes into death, destruction, a weapon used to kill and wound. But also when you cut, when you use a sword to cut in half, you make a division. So that's going to be a division, man ones that want to stay wicked of all people and the ones that want to get right all right it says when i say unto the wicked thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not warning see so we know the words of the heavenly father so we have to warn the people it says nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity but his blood will i require at thine hand so we got to get the blood off our hands that's why we go out all right we have camps set up you know and also we go out you know because this is not just a one day thing or one day out of the week thing we do this every day we be diligent scripture say be diligent verse 19 says yet if thou warn the wicked which is what we do blowing the trumpet warning the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness nor from his wicked way he shall die in his in his iniquity but thou hast delivered thy soul see we want to be delivered that's why we do this thing okay we don't want nobody to say oh we wasn't warning the people and we wasn't teaching and hey man that's why we make it public 
we publicize, you know, the announcement, the speech. All right. Ecclesiastic, because also known as Sirach chapter 39, verse 28, there be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In a time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. See, so these spirits are created to destroy, man. All right. And let's get into the destruction in more detail. It says fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. So these are the spirits that the Most High, okay, has created, all right, to cause, you know, to issue death and bring out destruction. All right, the Most High brings out commands and they, they do what the Most High wants them to do, which is, you know, that's showing forth his wrath. That's why suddenly shall his wrath come upon you if you do not seek the Lord and repent. All right, suddenly, and you can be, you know, destroyed in these ways. You know, when it was talking about, you know, hell, you know, that that's a form of, you know, natural disaster, as well as the storm, okay, as well as hurricanes, all these things, man. All right, the most I has a spirit on them. All right, that's why it said it's headed to Tallahassee, which, you know, it's not a coincidence, man, and that is the capital of Florida. So it's showing you, you know, the most I was making a statement. If, if it does breach, Tallahassee, all right, hit it. All right, man, especially if that's the first place that, you know, it, it lands on Tallahassee, which it looks like it's heading there. You know, that's where it's going to be most powerful at because right when it's in the water, that's the strongest, then it hits land and, you know, it kind of gets um, not weaker, but, you know, it just has more things that it's, it's, it's destroying and bringing up in that wind, okay? So it's making it, you know, basically work a lot harder than being in the water, all right? But verse uh, Psalm chapter 149 and verse 7, it says, Praise Yahweh Shemashar from the earth, ye dragons, and all the deeps. So see, the animals praise the Lord. And then the verse showed you an example. Those animals couldn't eat. All right. <laughs> That's why they had the animals, you know, even with that decree that was passed, they couldn't do that. They was praising the Lord, man. All right. So these people, you know, they don't have an excuse no more, man. All right. It says... It says fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind fulfilling his word. See, so this is just and true. This is faithful and true. These words, all right, like it say in the book of Second Ezra chapter 15, around the second verse, you know, these words are faithful and true. All right. So when we prophesy, we're telling you the truth. We're not lying to you. All right. And it's a fulfillment. So when you see these things come to pass, the storm is going to do some destruction. It's going to fulfill the word. All right, it's going to persecute. All right, bring uh, vengeance. Like Yahweh Shem Hashem said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. <laughs> like, you know, people can uh, talk their shit, treat you like shit. Man, or, or maybe, you know, put their hands on you, whatever it may be. But, hey, man, see, the most I can jack them up in worse ways than you can ever think of or imagine. So that's why, you know, give place onto wrath. Don't, don't try to seek out your own. Uh, justice, let the most high do it. Cause see, somebody could have been talking shit to you and the most I can have this storm just come and destroy their whole fucking house, man. <laughs> That's worse than you trying to get back by, you know, hitting them or <laughs> trying to kick their ass or something. And not even just their house. He could destroy he could take up the, the whole family's house. It could be their neighbors and you know, as well as their fucking parents and all that shit, man. It took the whole fucking city out, man. So it shows you that like, you know, man, hey <laughs> It's, it's it's a blessing to have the names Yahweh Yahweh Shai and be dear unto him, man. Okay? This is the book of Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 23. The, the, the desire of the righteous is only good. And see, our desire, you know, as we, you know, seek after righteousness, our desire is the destruction of this place, man. And that's a good thing. That's not bad. I, it don't matter if these people think it's bad because it says, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath and expectation goes into outcome. And scriptures say, Job 9 and 24, the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. So the wicked, wherever he dwells, wherever he lands at, you know, wherever he wants, you know, to try to hide and escape or whatever. And the Most High is going to bring his vengeance upon him. All right. And, and show forth his wrath. That's why these spirits that's created, to venge uh, created for vengeance, they will appease the Most High, man. All right. They're not going to, you know, just not do what the most high wants them to do they will do it and they're gonna uh appease it said appease the wrath of him that made them so the most High created the, the, these spirits to do these things you know like i said it was spiritual so you know we got to continue 
you know, following that path that's laid out for us, all right, and continue prophesying and praying for the downfall of this place. So, yeah, I just want to touch upon that. Yeah, how right this all this was edifying. To the next time, I want to say, shout out warm, DTA, a ball, a ball, soon.